We know that minimal residual disease has been explored um, for a couple of decades in follicular lymphoma, primarily by using the, the typical chromosome translocation, this sort of 1418 translocation, as a means of measuring minimal residual disease. This approach has been fraught with um, challenges because it's not always been reproducible in all studies, but also we know that probably about 10 to 15 percent of patients do not have this 1418 translocation, so it's not possible to monitor in that, that cohort of patients. There are potentially other ways of looking at minimal residual disease. One per, uh, potential approach is looking at um, circulating uh, tumor-free uh, so ctDNA um, because every patient will, will, will have levels of that. What is not clear at the moment in follicular lymphoma, because it's typically an indolent lymphoma, that we don't know what levels of ctDNA will be present in patients after they've finished therapy. So we don't know, you know um, how low the level of the ctDNA will be. We don't really know at the moment if we have sensitive enough tools to be able to detect the level of the sort of minimal residual disease. We're seeing the ctDNA certainly has sensitivity and certainly has accuracy in the setting of high-grade aggressive lymphomas like diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. So I think that um, an avenue that is certainly going to be explored in the future is the, the, the potential of ctDNA as, uh, as an adjunct uh, minimal residual disease tool. And indeed, the potential of using it to you know, monitor responses to therapies, Potentially also monitoring um, uh, toxicities to therapies. We've seen that um, certainly in, in CAR T cell patients, um, that ctDNA can be used um, in, in sort of aggressive lymphomas to look at uh, specific um, types of toxicity, such as neurotoxicity. So I, I don't doubt that there will be potential uh, of using this, uh, this approach and technology to monitor toxicities as well to therapies.